Here we are welcoming a guest again. We had on our show before, about two years ago, Christopher from Ethereum. Last time we saw you on this tour with Annihilator. That's right. So, uh, can you sum up what has happened since then? Quite a lot, actually. Um, after that tour, we did uh, another tour headline on the Defact Flip of album, and then we played Martel as well. I'm not sure. And, uh, well, we didn't promote the Packet Clip album in the same way as we did the new one. It was more like a, a middle album, unfortunately, because we didn't do any you know, big tours. But then um, I had the opportunity of doing a kind of album I always wanted to do, more fully orchestral album with a brilliant opera singing. Actually, it's a choir from Hamburg, from the North Deutsche Rundfunk Chor, something like that. Mm. And um, during this album, we've done a lot of promotion, a lot of touring. First of all, we did uh, tour with Amorphis, which uh, was very extensive. We did a lot of gigs in especially Germany, mm-hmm. but all of Europe as well. Um, and a lot of people thought that we wouldn't be able to, to perform, perform this kind of music live with the choirs, but we did um, called, um, a low-budget version of that one with amateurs, which sounded pretty all right, but we had a pretty big success, so this tour we employed more professionals. So now we're actually doing very good live, I think. The choir sounds not really like on the album because it's much much smaller choir, but mm-hmm. it sounds pretty good, too, I think. And uh, on this tour, out of the there's only German shows. There will be in total four mm-hmm. shows, I guess. It's going really well so far. So, how many people do you have on stage when you perform? Eight. Eight. Because the overall voices have developed to such an extent that you uh, cannot use any samples, but you have to have you the singers live. You can never make samples sing. Yeah. But you could like take a that recorder and put the whole thing on it, like orchestra and uh, or choir, and the drum could play to a click track. Yeah. But I don't think we would have a very good contact with our audience if 75% of the lead singing is coming from a machine. No. no, this is the point I was hinting at, because um, mm-hmm. If other bands had worked with vocals like that, it was only uh, like uh, backing or something like that. But you were the first band to put this in the foreground. Yeah, leaping. Also, you know, we're getting in an age where everyone does it. Like Moonspell is a really great live band. They also use those bats and samples. The same thing with the Sundown. We have all the the keyboards from the that tape or the hard disk or something. I think that's why we should do the opposite. No, we don't even have a backdrop. We're totally naked, you know. We don't mm-hmm. have any cool intro running. We were like, well, oh well, tune the guitar and do just yeah. normal people so they can see that actually the singing is coming from someone's mouth. You know, it's a very personal thing and more naked in difference of all the other high tech bands. I mean, they're doing really good, I mean, especially the Moonspell with all these projectors, and they're doing a really great show. But I think it would be boring if we would do the same, so that's why we try to do it completely the opposite. So if you've got this uh, eight people together now, uh, you probably don't do any old stuff, but uh, just on the TV album? Or? We play some old songs, because we, I think we're going to stop touring in the future yeah. when we did the new album. I mean, a lot of people misunderstood what I said before, that we're going to stop touring. I mean, I'd like to do a hundred tours on, on TV because I like touring, mm-hmm. but uh, that's not possible, so this might be the last tour. Mm-hmm. So, could you imagine uh, if you can't do any touring with uh, Ethereum anymore, that you do a kind of side project with some more straighter stuff? Mm-hmm. Would that be a possibility for the future? In that case, it's going to be more 70s hard rock, you know, really. 70s hard rock? Yeah, like very, very old. Scorpions? No, not really Scorpions, that's too much into the theory. You know. With the harmonies, more. Um, like the doors, well, that's more rock, but old Alice Cooper, no, Alice Cooper, oh, yeah. <laughs> very early 70s. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Deep Purple albums by the end of the 60s, the three first to make before Ian Gillen joined, that mm-hmm. kind. But uh, I guess that's going to be more of a funny thing, you know, nothing big. Maybe we'll do an album and maybe play clubs all over Europe just for fun. You know? Yeah, sounds Bring good. Some, some dope and some drinks and <laughs> having a good time. But yeah. It's still possible though that. Ethereum could do single performances in the future, maybe just a festival or something like Dynamo. But it's, it's going to be yeah. so costly because for the ideas we got so far for the new album, I'm calculating that like, we would have to be 11 people on stage. And you know, if we're going to be 11 people on stage, this venue is too small. 
Yeah. And we're not pulling that much people. I mean, if we sell 100,000 copies in Europe, sure, we can do tours, but I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen.